All right, guys, I'm just preheating the bed. Uh, I'm getting ready to print out um, a, uh, a custom mount that I've been building in Fusion 360. So um, I've got a what have I got? A race star motor. It's pretty high power, and it requires a custom mount. Mostly because the fuselage I printed for the P-51 Mustang D from 3D Labs, I'm using twin wall to make it really strong. I want the fuselage to be strong because if you print single wall, yeah, it's really not quite up to it. One crash and it'll fall to bits, more than likely. So I've decided to make a custom mount, and that, I'm sort of getting into Fusion 360. So what they do with these engine mounts is they have a little uh, tang on the end which I'm going to file down because it, normally it would be thicker here and then chamfer down to the bottom here but I haven't figured out how to get that chamfered down but I will do. I've created the four holes in the right places because it's asymmetric at the back of the motor in terms of where the holes are. Uh, so there's two holes sort of in the middle and two holes on the outer. And I presume you only need to really use two holes to mount onto, depending on your engine mount. But I've decided to use all four, um, just for a bit of fun, really. Just see if you me you know measuring stuff. I mean, the trick with Fusion 360 is interpreting stuff, and then getting the design the way that you want it. Now you can do that several ways. One way is to actually insert um, a canvas or a picture. And then use that as a means of drawing a sketch over the top of it. So that's one way you can do it. And I did start out with a picture, but in the end, because it's not three dimensional, the holes, it's, it's difficult to use it as the model. It's sometimes easy to start from scratch, start from a sketch. Um, if we go all the way back to, uh, we should be able to play this. Let's have a look. If I can get this to go all the way back. Come on, where's the play button? Huh. Home. Let's just reverse. Unless you need to save it or something. It's not playing ball, is it? There you go. There's the picture underneath anyway. Look. So I took the basic, this was the original print that you get out of um, um, when you you know you print one of the engine mounts. So I've used that as a model. I haven't really put any cross hat, the cross section in here because this is actually thick walled and it is very strong. And I printed out some samples. Not and I'll show you what you can do. You don't have to print the entire 10 millimeter thick engine mount. You can just print out a proportion of it. Then peel it off the bill plate, have a look at it, see if it sizes up with your motor. And then if you're happy, then start doing things like adding your chamfers to your holes and um, adding your radiuses to your edges and anything else you need to finish it off, really. So I was, what I was really interested to know is if I had the holes in the right place. That was the key thing. And was it central? Which it is. And then I started layering it up and that's typically what you're doing with fusion 360 is you're layering up you're building up the model in terms of what you want to see uh, on these engine mounts they also have securing screws they have a couple of screws either side left and right uh, this is the looking at the top so it's looking at the back of the engine going forward to the front of the propeller they call this the top section you can see that via the top here right so you can just say top, or you can go home, just to get a view where it is, or you can do yourself a free orbit um, where you decide where you want to, you know, uh, where you want it to be. So you see, I've got a hole through here, and a hole through there, and a hole in the top, but nothing on the bottom because it doesn't need one. Uh, this is where the pip goes, and this is the locator really. The reason they put a locator there is, and I haven't added the chamfer yet. The, op, the offset for what you call the, the P factor on the propeller. When a propeller spins, it creates a torque reaction. 
and that tends to push it creates a yaw factor um, in the model and you could trim out the aircraft but then then you're wasting it efficiency if you're having to trim an aircraft you're losing efficiency um, if, if the trim is offset by a certain amount so what they do I think it's about a I would say about a 15 degree um, um, angle they put from the top here on the on the actual back face up to the motor and I've got to add that yet uh, so I've got to find a cutting tool a mechanism to create a cut on the back here so that if I come up to the bottom where are you bottom front top left right bottom here we go what I need to do then the next phase or the final phase of this I just want to make sure it fits for a start and then the last phase of this model is to take this face uh, I'm just going to get make sure it's orientated right it's tricky um, is to get effectively a cut across one of the face that so this is actually cut 15 degrees so it'll be here it'll remain high but there I'll cut through so I need to figure a way to using a cutting tool to actually remove this surface um, it's a bit like filing all this edge down really all the way around here so you end up with an angle coming across the top here and if I free orbit it what I'll look to excuse me free orbit what I'll look to do is maybe I need to drag this yeah here we go what I need to be able to do is cut this face away starting from about there I would say judging by what I'm looking at in fact I can measure it I know this is 10 millimeters if I use the inspect option here you can just press I for inspect and pick a point here and pick a point there I can see that's 10 millimeters across there right 10 millimeters so what I need to do is measure the angle of the dangle so I'm measuring it now and it's actually just shy of nine millimeters I need to cut into this edge here so I need to remove about a millimeter of material from here all the way across to there to that point there and then this will create an angle so the motor will end up pointing 15 degrees looking on the top of the nose to the right I think I got that right yes it is it's 15 degrees pointing to to the right so looking down the fuselage it will be to the right so this is coming down the fuselage this is the front here with this and it's coming through here yeah I'm making sure I've got my facts right here <laughs> it's more difficult than you think getting this all right because you've got to visualize this three-dimensionally and then you've got to transfer it from your brain into a drawing so yeah I need a 15 degree cut basically so that the engine is pointing if I was looking from the back of the aircraft it's trying to drive to the right so the, the engine itself is trying to drive to the right so the P factor of the propeller which is trying to push it the opposite way will keep the aircraft flying forward straight forward because uh, otherwise it will try and push it the other way and you can counter that with rudder or even a bit of aileron if you want it on your trim but you're going to waste energy so that's the last phase I need to do with this now once you have finished off your uh, model you typically save it and then you will go and export it and you would go and choose right down the bottom STL and then you go and export it once it's exported you can then bring that into 
Let's see if it's done my export. All right. I'm thinking I may have put it in the downloads folder. There you go. And it's motor mount V7, I think. V6 or V7. Let's go and bring it in. Yeah, let's try V7. When was this created? 640. Actually, it's that one. I'm going to, need to get my numbers right. Prepare. It's actually that one. So that's the later one. There you go. Now, what you can do as well, there's a neat little trick you can do with Cura. Let's uh, pause automatic slicing. Is you can drag this down to here and say, I only really, I, I only really want to print this bit for testing. What I'm really interested to know is, will this fit into the fuselage frame into the receptacle for it? Will it go in? Yeah, just so I get a sense of whether these curves are correct here, whether this pip is correct, which is you know a little key, and whether it will slot in. Now, the P51, and I think it's probably the same with a lot of the uh, the uh, 3D lab models, is uh, one dimension across I think is 25, and the dimension down or width, if you like, is. Uh, 26 so this is they're not it's not a complete rectangle it's a slightly different size so that's something you have to consider as well so you really need to get yourself a you know a vernier caliper um, to measure these things but one, once you've done that and I recommend that rather than trying to use a rule the rule you could use but using a, a vernier caliper even just a plastic one is adequate all right, so that will, see that's only going to take six minutes to print that out. I can preview it just so I can get the sense of the material. I'd recommend using a brim, otherwise it'll probably slide around the plate. Um, at least it does not my wham bam. So I will create a brim on this one, three millimeter. Uh, temperatures usually going to be the same. We're using a slightly different material. It's a bit, it's a good PLA, but it's. Um, a sort of silk based PLA and it seem to behave in some ways like PLA and TPU. It's kind of got a glossy surface to it. Seems to benefit from a higher temperature. For the And you need to figure this out as you learn your materials. Everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, bottom layer two, a uh, three rather, top layer of three, wall of two and a bit of infill on this one of 10% because why? It's thick so it needs to yeah, it needs to be able to uh, handle the power that's going through it and, and sufficiently bond, you know, has sufficient strength in it uh, to be able to connect into the airframe. All right, so that's good to go to print. And uh, my build plate was already preheated pretty much. In fact, I think it just started to cool down. Uh, that will now come up to around 230 once the build plate's got to 60. You can preheat from here now inside of the latest 4.6 and above, which is quite nice. You don't have to go into here and uh, your temperature and preheat here. You can actually do it natively from within Cura now. That's a nice little feature. So you can you typically preheat your build plate, give it a minute or two to get ahead, and then start preheating your uh, if you want you, know, you can preheat your uh, your extruder so that's what I've been working on um, the knocking foots uh, is well underway I'm just waiting now for uh, some electronics to come in speed controllers I mean matching motors with speed controllers there's a nice feature um, I think I was kind of talking about this on one of the previous videos um, there's a nice feature, well, I won't call it features, it's something I discovered, is that if I have a look at the um, parts, in fact, let's go to my desktop, if case, I keep all my files on a D drive, so it's well out of the way of the C drive, so if I lose everything, I've still got my D drive. I recommend you do that for any work you're working on. Do not store your data on your primary drive. Get it either in the cloud or on a separate drive. Uh, my D drive is a gigabyte, so uh, or actually it's a terabyte. Sorry, 
Um, so I simply put everything that's data way out of the way away from my core C drive. And I can use my OneDrive for a lot of stuff, so I suggest you do something similar. I think even uh, Fusion 360 has a cloud-based uh, backup mechanism as well. So coming back to here, look at these files. You'll notice um, that they give you two sets of fuselages. Well, noses. They give you a fuselage, a standard fuselage, a Cox piston engine, an external motor. So if your motor won't fit inside, obviously it's not as elegant to put a motor on the outside because it creates more drag. But if you put the internal motor and then put a spinner on it, it's going to be much slicker and faster. But they give you a choice. They give you a glider fuselage. And they also give you um, a non-glider fuselage. The glider fuselage is slightly different. It doesn't have the holes for the engine mount. It doesn't have the four holes you need. But what you can do is you can print two noses out. And that's what I've done. And instead of gluing the nose into the second stage of the fuselage, you can screw it in because it includes these big lugs. And I was looking for a system that allowed effectively swapping out the nose for a glider and swapping out. You have, obviously, you have to set your center of gravity and everything. It's going to be different from a glider to a, to a motor-driven one because it's going to be much heavier at the front. But what you can do is um, fuselage one. What you can do uh, just let's drag it out. It's going to be easier. What you can do, and again, I'm going to experiment with this, is you can use these tangs to screw into through the wall of the second set section of the fuselage. Now, you could spot it with a bit of glue if you wanted. The fact is, because it's got these big tangs, and if you put a sufficient amount of material into this top section here, so it's fairly strong and rigid, um, you could screw through into here. And it's sufficiently well, you know, it's got enough surface area here so that it will provide, um, you know, because if you're using a motor, it's going to be pulling here, isn't it, right? On these edges so you could put a couple of screws in here a couple of screws in here and a couple of screws in there right um, so that's what I'm gonna have a crack at I'm gonna create a model where I can swap the nose out and it's a theme that flight test and others have started to practice with where you have a fuselage that you can swap out either different power units you can actually take away the power unit swap out the nose for a different power unit with a battery and everything else inside. So this becomes more modular. And when you're building systems, sometimes it's quite useful to think about building modular systems. And that's where I'm leaning towards these days. Rather than printing out two or three different models, each with similar functions, why not print out one model that can actually do two separate things? So, in other words, rather than you buying a fuselage that's a glider or a fuselage that's for power, um, why not just print a fuselage that can be converted from a glider into power or vice versa? So, anyway, that's some of the things I've been thinking over and practicing with. And I um, hope you're enjoying the videos. I suggest you get into Fusion 360. I'm only just learning as I go. But it's a lot of fun. What's really fun is seeing your object getting printed out and then seeing it actually works. That's when you realize that there's a future in work and doing different things. And that you might, if you've got a creative talent, engineering background, or if you want to get into this, there's a business there. Anyway, good luck. Catch you later.